the intelligence cycle. Uh, just an introduction. During this session, we'll take a look at the intelligence cycle uh, and explore some key concepts um, about how it's used and how we're going to be using it through the rest of the course. At its core, as we've seen, it's the cyber threat intelligence or threat intelligence in general is about turning data into intelligence. Um, and the intelligence cycle is essentially the, the overall process of how we go about doing this. Yes, we can use different techniques within each of um, the sections of the intelligence cycle, but overall, it's this thing called the intelligence cycle that allows us to do this. So we've already come across this, and I've introduced this already, and that's this idea of a lot of data being turned into a small amount of information and a, a lot of information being turned into an even smaller amount of intelligence. And I did talk about these um, processes that allow that transition, so collection and analysis. Those two um, processes are extracted from a much larger process, which is this one, the intelligence cycle, and it's uh, four steps that this is what we're going to be looking at. So when I'm talking about the intelligence cycle, you're looking at it on the screen there, it's those four steps. How does the intelligence cycle work? It is sequential and it is a cycle. So you start off with direction, then it moves into collection, then analysis um, and dissemination, and then finally back to direction. Um, as we've seen, or as we will see throughout, um, when we're talking about threat intelligence, intelligence work, there's a lot of concepts that are quite hotly debated within the intelligence community. However, if I were to pick one thing that's um, just the cornerstone of what we do, it would be the intelligence cycle. I think almost anybody working within intelligence um, today or historically um, would agree that this is really the bedrock upon which our professional discipline is built. I think even if you went back to uh, sort of circa the 1500s and had a conversation with Sir Francis Walsingham, uh, Queen Elizabeth's first spy master, you know, he may use different words, um, but he would understand those four phases and how they would slot together as well. So I'd be pretty confident if I were you having a conversation and saying, uh, you know, the four steps of the intelligence cycle are these. It's a pretty solid bedrock. So let's dig, dig into these phases a little bit more. Uh, and I'm going to offer some um, definitions that you should learn. So direction. Direction is, um, even though it's a cycle, this is usually where it's acknowledged that the cycle initiates. This is where it starts initially. So direction is where the intelligent team takes direction from the customer. That's a fancy way of saying they get told what to do by the main stakeholder for their operation. This is um, more professionally described as intelligence requirements or IRs. Don't worry about intelligence requirements for the time being, but for the time being, just get this idea that there's somebody out there who's not in the intelligence team, which is part of the wider organization, who's giving the intelligence team a job to do, and those are codified inside what's known as intelligence requirements. Then that leads on to the collection stage. This is where the intelligence team collects data and turns it into information by collecting it. This is done more specifically by tasking to what we call SANDA or sources and agencies. Again, don't worry about the SANDA piece, but what the point to take away is this idea of collecting data and turning it into information at that collection stage. Analysis is the stage that then follows on from this. Uh, and this is really where the nitty gritty in my mind occurs um, within the intelligence cycle. This is where information is turned into intelligence and that's where magic happens to create that sort of final product with that. Dissemination, this is where inte intelligence is handed back to the client and this should in turn stimulate new direction, hence completing the cycle and restarting the cycle um, again. So you may say, why, you know, why do this? Well, what this does is acknowledges that um, each of these steps is a specialis specialization in their own right. So I, I know people that have specialized in just one of these areas. Most of the time you get a specialization occurring in either people who collect data to fulfill intelligence requirements and those who analyze data for intelligence requirements. However, um, there is an increasing number of specialists who specialize, for example, in dissemination. So, for example, client success is often what this is called and within the private sector. 
So they're not collecting data, they're not analysing it, they're just taking what has been done by other teams and making sure that's communicated in the most impactful way back to the client. Direction as well. Um, you do see this in the form of what the military would call liaison officers. And they're people who will just spend their days working with the client to really get to the depth of what they're actually asking about. Big part is, is uh, there is a start to the intelligence cycle and that's the direction phase. That's what kicks it off. But if you get it right, it'll just go on forever because as you answer more clients' questions, so the threat landscape that is facing that client changes and so they'll have more questions. And if you've done a good job, they'll keep um, coming back to you, like customer satisfaction, I suppose. So what I want to do at this point is integrate this model here that we can see um, up on the screen with direction collection analysis and dissemination with uh, the pyramid that we spoke about earlier. Now you can see those two phases of collection and analysis sitting within that pyramid and what I'm then going to add in is direction and dissemination. You can see there, within that concept, you've got direction at the bottom that stimulates an activity to go out and start collecting data, um, collecting information and fusing it together. And then you can finally see on the top, um, disseminating that intelligence back to the client. So the two models sort of work together. The pyramid particularly becomes useful when we start looking later on at how you handle data, how you classify data, and these things as well. So just make a note of how these two things interact. So why is this useful? This might seem like common sense. Um, however, you have, you have to bear in mind that intelligence agencies um, can be extremely large. So you're talking thousands of people working across international borders, working with many, many different specializations in a very demanding and high pace environment. So having the intelligence steps broken down in this way allows a manager um, to understand which phase of the intelligence cycle um, that they're in. Also, it allows the development of specialization within each of these areas as well. So the most obvious thing is, say for example, you're in a private sector cyber threat intelligence team, you would like to acquire a type of service or a product that will give you some kind of collection capability that will have a price to it most of the time. And what this um, division of that area allows you to do is just understand where you're focusing your finance and your effort in those areas. That's just one example. But what it allows you to do is divide them down into these areas. A little more um, complex, but still understandable, is it's often very desirable to separate these four steps. Uh, and this is um, most noticeable within the idea, idea of a sterile corridor. What's that, you may add? Well, sterile corridor is a deliberate separation between phases of the intelligence cycle with the objective of obscuring aspects of an intelligence activity to other members of the intelligence team. You might think, why? Why would that ever be beneficial? But it's based on a principle called need to know and source protection. So you'll most often see sterile corridors existing between uh, the collection and the analysis phase, specifically in regards to the identity of sources giving that information or data to the intelligence collector. The intelligence collector will most of the time know who's giving them that information. They'll know where they live, who they are, what they do, that type of thing. But to protect the identity of that individual, they, they keep that on a need-to-know basis and they just give the information that they've been provided to the analyst. That's an example of a sterile corridor um, within intelligent practice. But they can exist across um, the intelligence cycle. So, for example, does the collector really need to know who the, who, who the customer was that initiated um, their collection effort? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. A lot of the time you don't. Equally, does the analyst really need to know where that product is going? Uh, a lot of the time I produced analytical products and they, they just went to an email address and I never really knew what happened to them. So this is a short section, but it's it's absolutely pivotal really to what we're doing. The intelligence cycle is, is probably the most important principle that we're going to cover during this course. Um, it's broken down into these four steps, and if you learn nothing else, 
learn these four steps, so direction, collection, analysis, and dissemination. Why is it useful? It is it provides a solid foundation for us to build on. So think of it like this building. It's all about a framework. It's all about something that we can conduct activities off with focus, with, with momentum, with, with, with creativity around those areas as well. So if we compare that to just tossing a coin, you could do that if you're asked an intelligence question. You might get it right, you might get it wrong. But really what we're looking at here is building structures that we can do structured analysis, structured investigation from.